Hey guys, this is Will from Going On Some Places and I'm back for another product backpack review, but this time it's not about peak design. So yes, I'm finally talking about another backpack. This is the Cabin Zero 42 liter Advantage Pro or ADV Pro. It's made from the UK and it's in a lovely Atlantic blue. Uh, the color is what really drew me towards the bag. Um, on the website, it's a lot brighter than what you see here. This video hopefully will show you that it's a bit more of a subdued blue, but it's perfect. This is my kind of blue, and it's in that 500D uh, ripstop material that you kind of expect from other bags that you know everyone's using these days. So it's, it's water resistant, it has that rugged feel, um, and it'll protect your stuff, so that's really important. So I really wanna show you some quick features here before I delve into some of the common questions that I think you're gonna have. So, uh, it's got two straps, one over here, one over here at the top. Um, it's got a lot of cool features as well. From a security perspective, it's got this Ocoban uh, tag, which means that you can register this bag and if it does get lost, it can be, it can be traced back to you. It's got the um, water bottle, or in this case, a tripod slot here on one of the sides. Got compression. Uh, straps on both sides. Now in terms of the front, you got a compartment for the laptop, which is really important for me. You can put that right here. It's got more pockets, more zippers, a lot of that stuff that you need so you can throw in a lot of your gear inside. So that's the front, that's quick access. You got a zipper here and compartment at the top. That's where I'll be putting my sunglasses and kind of other quick access items. And then we get into the, the main part of the bag. Now, the reason why I was interested in this bag was that it was designed as a suitcase replacement backpack, but I want to see how this would perform with some of the photography needs and videography needs that I have. It's not designed specifically for photography, but I want to show you what I've kind of come up with. So let's open up the top part. It is fully openable, two thirds anyways, and I'll show you everything that I have inside. So let's pull this all the way down. This is how far it opens. And so you'll see some familiar items. I got the Peak Design tech pouch that fits on the top, so I got all my tech gear. I actually have the five liter sling and it fits in perfectly, so it's the right width. So this is gonna carry all of my primary photography needs. And so if I'm using it as a, as a small day pack, all I gotta do is take this out and use just the five liter sling. Uh, what's really cool is that it has bungee cords and bungee cords are meant to hold just things in place because you're gonna have things like clothes and maybe shoes and other things in here. I'm using the medium uh, packing cube um, right here and it's held in place right here and I'm just gonna take that out. So that's the packing cube. And then finally at the very bottom, you'll see that I have the small camera cube. So this was perfect. I didn't know if it could fit inside, but I just threw it down there. No fastening required. Because this is as far as the zipper goes, it's fine. It's, it's perfectly almost designed for something like this. And what I'm going to be using the small camera cube here for is really just secondary camera gear items like other lenses and microphones and things, things of that nature. Um, I'm going to keep it open. Uh, things will be on top, so I think we'll be okay with this being at the bottom, but I like kind of this configuration. Now it doesn't have side access and it's not fully openable, kind of like a book like the Peak Design backpack, but I'll be able to get to it if I need to from the top. I might have to take some things out, but it's kind of a trade off. Anyways, there are more zippers here and more compartments. So all that stuff checks my boxes, which is really cool. And there's more to talk about because if you turn this all the way around, you then get access to the straps, the shoulder straps. That's a big thing that a lot of people have been talking about and really comfortable. Um, this is a backpacker's backpack because you have the perforated uh, foam, you got breathable, um, breathable components to the straps. The back here is allows for breathability Inside, it's actually got an aluminum frame that goes around this way. So that's for load bearing reasons and really keeps the structure of the backpack intact. And you got these giant um, 
waist straps. These giant waist straps are what gonna, that's what's gonna be load bearing uh, when you have it on and you have, you're going hiking or you're carrying a lot of heavy stuff. Um, and I like that, you know, they've kept it simple. They're just using the simple plastic buckles. They work well. They're not gonna strap, scratch against other things because they're plastic. Um, and that works really well. And then if you're gonna check this bag in or you're not gonna be using the straps at all, uh, what happens is that at the very bottom here, you have material that basically comes up and you can zipper it up and make all the straps disappear. I'm not gonna do that right here, but yeah, you close it up and then the straps disappear. And lastly, zippers. People love talking about zippers. These are YKK zippers. They're actually aluminum YKK zippers, which means that they're insanely light and a large as well. They're easy to handle on all of them that they have here. So Cabin Zero has done a fantastic job, but this is all on paper, right? We're not, we haven't taken it out on the road. Um, I've done some sample packing here to see how it goes, but you wanna know how this actually performs in real life. So I actually have a trip coming up to Japan where I'm gonna bring it with me and testing it out and learning things along the way. So I wanna show you everything that I pick up along the way, things that I love, things that I think could be improved. So here we go. Leaving from Toronto, it was time to put the bag to the test. First up, does it qualify as carry-on luggage? Boarding the plane, I want to know whether it would fit overhead and under the seat. The first couple days were a little bit rainy, but the Advantage Pro stood up to the test. Now Tokyo is very much a walking city, so we walked a ton. And thanks to the comfort features of the backpack, I had no issues at all. With the shoulder and rear panel airflow system, sternum strap, waist strap, and top tension straps, all that camera gear I was carrying didn't feel that heavy at all. And I gotta say, that Atlantic blue looks pretty darn good. Now from a security perspective, it was all pretty easy where I used my TSA locks to lock the zippers together and the Okoban feature was nice to have as well. During the trip, it was also incredibly easy to put in my laptop and documents. For camera quick access, the Peak Design Capture did work on the thin straps, but the problem was that the screws protruded through. Slotting the backpack through the handles of a suitcase was supposed to be easy, but it ended up being a little bit too snug. Curious what I packed in the main compartment? Here's what I put inside. So final conclusions, I learned a ton from my trip to Japan. This is a bag I realized that really is well, well made in terms of the material, the ripstop material, the water resistant material, though you will probably still need a rain fly. Um, the zippers are aluminum and lightweight, which I really like, they're, they're large as well. Um, the aluminum framing um, makes everything rigid. And finally, I think that was most important to me was that when I was using it in the city under full load or even hiking, that this was a very comfortable bag. So the back straps, the waist straps, the sternum straps, all easy to operate, all easy very to use, and really does a good job in terms of distributing the weight around the body. Now, the one thing I was really concerned about was that this was not a 
ultimately a um, photography specific backpack. Uh, what I was able to do was essentially take components from other companies and make it a hybrid type of bag. Uh, knowing that it didn't have side access uh, to access the camera, I was able to pull in my Peak Design Capture along the, along the back strap and then I was able to make it work really well actually. I was able to then take in my five liter sling uh, as well as my small camera cube, put that inside here, which allowed me to easily access my gear if I needed to. Uh, now, one thing you gotta realize is that because this bag is essentially a top loading backpack when you're on the road, that things at the top, easy to access, but things at the bottom, a little bit more challenging. And so that was something that I learned along the way. If I had anything at the bottom I needed, I essentially needed to pull things out from the top to get to things at the bottom. Um, the other thing that annoyed me just slightly, uh, although not a game changer, uh, is the fact that it only has one uh, pocket for uh, water bottles or tripods and things like that. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was able to use my tripod on one end, uh, but when I was using it in the city for water bottles, uh, I often got confused which side it was on, and so it was frustrating that I couldn't have both sides available to me uh, because the handle gets in the way. Anyways, I hope this review of the Cabin Zero 42 liter Advantage Pro uh, shows you uh, everything that you want to know about this backpack and whether ultimately this is a bag for you or not. Whether you're a traveler, you're a photographer, a hiker, or all of the above. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And in the description down below, I have a coupon code to save you guys a ton of money on this backpack if you decide to buy it. Uh, anyways, Make sure you catch some of my other product reviews and other travel videos. I'll see you guys next time on Going Awesome Places.